Monday, the 18th. It is 1622 present current location time. I was unable to push the dash cam record for some reason. I guess I had something else running at the time. So it only brought up another clip from before and I'm like, no, I want to save this clip. Anyways, we're going to get into it. So I get to say, hello, all my beautiful thinking people, you. This is your host, Clyde Phillips, and I'm coming back at you one more time with an update on this current adventure, or maybe a couple of updates on this current adventure. As I've been tripping along, the weather got really bad, like really bad. Like it was like minus 15 degrees or somewhere in that area. And of course, every time I stopped to charge or to eat, I had to get out, turn to ice while reinflating that tire. It was quite the adventure. Um, I don't know when the last time I worked on a car in the winter, but <laughs> it definitely was a reminder that uh, not something you want to be doing very often. But anyways, so I got through that. And uh, I checked on the um, on my app for Tesla. And when I went into the app and I went to get roadside assistance, uh, it was nice enough to remind me that I'm not covered anymore, which was a good hint. <laughs> that they had to remind me because they knew it wasn't going to be fun. Uh, from my location, where I happened to be at that time, it was going to uh, it was going to be towed. It was going to be towed to Manitoba, a, a location in Manitoba, which wow would have been like hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away. I don't know how long I would have had to wait for it to be picked up either. And it was just a slow leak, so I was really asking them, is it worth it for me to just limp along until I make it to a place where I can get the tire fixed? And as soon as I saw where they were gonna tow me, I canceled my roadside assistance immediately. And uh, I limped along to a Flying J. And when I checked on, uh, you know, the G00, you know. Anyways, it told me that the Flying J happened to be a tire repair shop. Oh, I was delighted, I was there already. So I went in and asked and they said, oh God, no, we don't, we don't do tires here. I was like, oh, because I, I checked on G00, you know what, and they said you did, but do you know of any place nearby? So they gave me a card to another guy, which was about 110 kilometers down the road. <sighs> All said and done, I was doing fan funking tastic all the way through, but I knew something had to something had to be disrupted. My life is never exciting or fun without disruption. And sure enough, I end up in Tundurin Bay. Yes, my man. Tum Tundurin Bay. And in Tundurin Bay, I found a Mr. Loop. And Mr. Loop did tires. So I went in to get my tire repaired, which I imagine somewhere in Ontario, it would have been about $30, $35 for an internal patch. It only cost me 80 bucks. I was like, hey, you know what? If it can save me from the bitter cold excursions to uh, top it up over and over and over and over again, all the way out west and all the way back to Ontario, it was a blessing. So I got her done. We had a lot of laughs there. Talked about Tesla. Uh, I think the whole building is a convert now. Even the truck drivers are, not truck trucks, but I mean like pickup truck drivers were like, really? The Cybertruck does that? It's like this? The one guy said, well, I, I heard about that, that um, 
all wheel steering thing and he goes that's kind of kind of tough I said you know what like everything else on this car you get used to it in a day and it turns out to be so comfortable that it's something you don't want to ever go back to anything else after so we had a lovely conversation about the T's and uh, yeah I was on my way and wouldn't you know it I was so exhausted autopilot had to save me about 10 times and one of those times I drove right past the tire repair shop that he was telling me about so I decided no I'm not going to turn back I don't want to end up using up my electrons and not being able to make it to the next supercharger so I just kept on going and uh So, anyways, as the story goes, the, the place he wanted me to stop at was to get tire rotation and to retorque the wheels. Okay? Because after you get a repair or whatever, they balance the tire or whatever, they definitely want you to go and get retorqued, right? After you've driven, like he said, a couple hundred kilometers or whatever. So, anyways, I passed that gas station or repair station or whatever, tire rotation station. And I kept on going all the way to Ignace. I don't know if that's how the way you pronounce it, but it's kind of like ignorant, but Ignace. It was, it's a really tiny little place as well. So I go into there to get my, uh, to get charged. And I realize, wow, I did almost use up the whole battery. So I think I'm going to get myself a half an hour snooze, which might saved me on its own so sure enough I did and it was a wonderful half hour snooze I set the alarm on the on the, uh, the Samsung and I laid down there and was comfortable as hey although I'll tell you if you're in a Model 3 and you're road tripping uh, maximum height is 6 foot 3 for the back of that car because anything more than that, and you'll have to be a contortionist. I had to go on a complete diagonal, have my head way in the corner and my feet in the opposite corner. And to tell you the truth, because it's so cold, it was so cold out there. It's not too, too, well, it's getting bad again. It's at minus six again. My feet were getting cold in the corner, um, corner edge of the trunk. So keep that in mind, folks. Six foot three. Well, actually, I'm six foot three and three quarters. So six foot three would be kind of safe. Maybe your feet won't be pressed up against the corner. Um, needless to say, anyways, I'm enjoying it. One way or the other, I'm enjoying it. I, I was worried about the tire. I was worried about the tire. I was worried about the tire. I, it was Sunday. There, I knew there was no way up in the northern regions of Ontario that I was going to find anybody open at that time on a Sunday so I just had to keep on going and pray that it didn't blow uh, pray that the, the, the hole didn't get bigger and bigger as it was it was a tiny little roofing nail and I were close to a roofing nail it was some sort of a uh, industrial kind of repair type smaller nail <clears throat> and I have a funny feeling I know where it came from and I will be checking all my video footage in the next little while to see if the person I suspect placed that nail by my tire because listen 15 months I've been parking in the same place my place and I've never ever ever had a problem with a tire and every other place I park never ever ever had a problem with a tire all of a sudden over the past little while uh, a couple of little skunks have been lurking around my area and I think one of them might be vindictive enough to have done it. Anyways, if I get them on uh, on video, I'll have them, and I'll deal with them myself. I mean, I mean, I will, I will not deal with them myself. I didn't say that. Rewind the tape. Okay, tire fixed. Half hour snooze in. Had a little bit of munchies, and I was wondering. How long 
before I make it out of Ontario. I originally had thought I would have made it in 24 hours, but I had to stop so many times just to close my eyes, even if it was for like two minutes, just to try to gather a little bit of brain function. So if you're doing this trip, do not stay up all the day before and all the night before and packing everything up and carrying things up and downstairs and then embark on this crazy grueling journey. Get really good sleep before you take off and you'll probably get two thirds of the way there before you even have to like totally give in and, and take a big long snooze. So I am now on my way to Kenora. After Kenora, it says hop, skip, and a jump into Manitoba. So if I excluded my little bit of naps, uh, I probably would have been able to just squeak it out in a 24-hour period. So what you're seeing now is the road to Kenora. I don't know if we've passed any... Um, any city ahead signs or anything like that but if they are they'll be on this video so this journey as you know is quite the undertaking but here's what it tells you all of us in the 1585 club we never give up and we never give in but we are those who keep an open mind because, hey, <laughs> without an open mind, I probably would have turned around and went back. Okay? No matter how important this occasion is, the stress for most people would probably have been too much to bear. And, uh, wow. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm really a good portion of the journey there. A good portion. Like, the lion's share is already done. Uh, the amount that's left to go is less than arriving here at this spot. So, I'm good. I'm loving it. And I got to reorganize, put some stuff away in the big bag, so that uh, it's not just sitting around and attracting, you know, people who are in need. Yeah, I'm liking it. But I've almost gone through my whole store of food that was part of what I used to keep me awake but I did crack open where is it uh oh don't tell me it fell out of the car no I got it a big big thing of these nuts these nuts these nuts are large I got me some large nuts I mean does help me stay awake. When I find myself drifting in a bad way, I just start having one nut at a time. And the chewing seems to tell my brain that it needs to stay awake long enough to at least get through that kernel. And then when that kernel's gone and it's turned to dust, I grab another kernel. And it usually gives me a good hour reprieve. And then I have to shut my eyes for a few minutes to get a little bit resilience or here's another trick that I use guys and as you know I used to run back and forth from Windsor to Toronto um, while I was working on different film sets and sometimes only getting one or two hours uh, rest at home um, I, I was married so I'll just call it rest and then get back on the road and head back out to Toronto and uh, that was what kept me alive was uh, these nuts and I, I'm telling you for sure it, it actually did work for me I hope it'll work for you just another tip to add to your repertoires so folks there's my update I'm doing good we're on the move as you can see I didn't even have to black out my my windows and stuff when I took that snooze because honestly I was exhausted 
so out cold with the light pouring in didn't really matter I should have probably left these on while I was sleeping because I didn't move one inch I just went out on my back probably snoring no I don't I don't I don't, I don't think I snore nobody has ever said I snored so uh, and not that there's very many people to testify to that but let's just leave it at nobody's ever said I snored all right so folks in the comments let me know what you think of what's going on so far let me know about the scenery that you've seen thus far oh the big story I wanted to tell you that was totally magnificent and I missed it on the uh, on the dash cam footage I was unable to save the clip normally when you're driving along and you see something and you want to save the clip you go into your your dot dot dots and you push on dash cam and it it says clip saved if I could have saved that clip, you would have seen, in the wintertime, here in Canada, northern region of Ontario, I was going by and I saw something out on the snow, probably snow-covered ice. And as I was approaching, I'm looking, 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 and there was a second one. I'm like, okay, what are these? They were two bald eagles, beautiful, sitting there on the snow, just kind of looking around. They're probably having a chat about their excursion across Canada. And probably a little pissed that I didn't invite them to come on my excursion. But anyway, it was beautiful to see them. They're gorgeous. They were tall. They were that big that the driving up towards them, they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, yeah, that's what they are. And sure enough, right beside them, beautiful bald eagles. So, that was the other part of the adventure so far. Um, the weather, like I said, was terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, it was like whiteout. And thank God for the folks at Tesla, the software engineers, and that team. Because before, you could not do anything with your windshield wipers. You couldn't do anything with your headlights. As soon as you clicked autopilot, it took over those functions to make sure, of course, that it kept you as safe as possible. But safe as possible, I'm looking, it's got the high beams on in snowy, stormy conditions, and it's nothing but a white out blizzard in front of your face. And I'm thinking, if it cancels itself, I'm not gonna be able to see anything. So I tried, I clicked the, uh, the windshield wipers, and I put them on slow, and then I clicked the headlight high beams, and sure enough, I was able to turn off the auto headlights, and I was able to turn off my high beams. So in that blizzard condition, I could see the road quite perfectly, but I couldn't put it back in autopilot because it would have took over and I would have been looking into a blizzard. So that's my update. Sorry, I just almost totally forgot to tell you those things. And if anything else creeps into my brain after this, I shall update you shortly. Hey, did you hit the like button? Have you subscribed? Because you know what? With thousands and thousands of views spread out over my videos, it's surprising how few of you are subscribed. And it's even more surprising that the repeat watchers some are not even liking the videos, but they come back for more. Are you gluttons for punishment? If you are, that's okay. I don't mind that either because you know what? I talk some real heavy crap. And sometimes it can insult people. It could offend people. But I'm telling you folks, I'm giving it to you straight from the hip. This is stuff that comes off world life news. Okay? People going and really digging and uncovering unpleasant bits of information. If it offends you, then you should be offended at the circumstances that bring that on. Don't be offended by me who's bringing you the information. Be offended by the parties who are involved in causing these things. Take what I give you as my opinion that's been informed by some really good fact finders. And I'm not talking about your governments, because we know the government will tell you whatever they need to keep you under their thumb or under the heel of their boot. 
I know some of you are going to be offended by that and go, no, I love my government. I vote for them every time and they always do me good. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> one of the very few lucky ones. Because most other people I've ever talked to, they know how horrible they've been misled for a million years. And I'm not going there anymore. That's it. That's the end of that. Folks, remember, I love you all. Now, until next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and above all, stay as happy as humanly possible. I'll chat at you soon. Bye for now. Oh, I missed it. It was, that was the sign that was saying how far to the next three locations. Would have been just interesting. You would have had a better uh, view of where I'm actually at. All right, folks, I think I'm going to post this one right away, too, even with the coughing and the choking and the sputtering and all that good stuff. And uh, when I clean it up later, I will put it on YouTube. So if you're one of the lucky ones who are on Facebook, you'll see it soon. Ciao now.